Welcome back to Satisfactory Release. My name is Nilaus and we're continuing on this glorious journey in our beautiful base. I know some people don't like it, but the people who don't like it probably not watching my YouTube videos. And the people who like it are here. So thank you very much for your support. It looks amazing. I love it. I was a little bit uh, uh, worried about sort of the last episode with all the manufacturing designs. But hey, you liked it. I liked it. That was awesome. Uh, I think it's very important to just emphasize the, the, the strength of this, how fast we actually built some really massive and difficult builds and how easily we can just scale it up. So now top right hand corner that's the objective complete phase three how are we going to do that well uh this this is expensive so if only we had like a way to do that uh cheaper so let's go get, find that way because under alien technology we have this one the power augmenter and we have this one as well the amplification Ooh, the computers do we have computers now yes of course we do because that's what we did and then what about the same thing Sam fluctuator, yes please, we also have plenty of that. Look at that, how nice it is that we have done that. So, what are we going to do first? We Let's do a power augmenter first. Because that's not something I think we're going to use right now, but it's something that's going to be super handy coming forward. Let's see what the lore dump there will be here. Power augmenter unlocked. Summer sloops naturally harvest. Harvest. Yes. yes, harvest <laughs> energy from distant sources and distribute First. it locally. The power augmenter supercharges summer sloops by feeding it local power, increasing its harvesting range and efficiency, and thus power output. Basically, the more power it's given, the more it provides. Do not loop the loop organ. It will shred and tear and unravel the threads. Many temples burned. Good to know. That confirms that hypothesis. <sighs> Let's build it. That costs 10 summer loops. That's a lot. So you're not going to be stamping down a lot of these. As I understand, there is this uh, total of 101 summer loop on the maps. And so that's all there is to it. Which is still a lot. Um, can we just hook it up to this one? Well, we can if we upgrade this. There. So this looks great. What does it do? Well, let's touch it. Don't do that. <laughs> so, so, so that's not what it does. It's not for touching. Uh, what it does is it provides static 50 megawatts of power, and then it takes a 10% boost of the power after the static boost, and the rest of it as well. So basically, if we disconnect it, and uh, let's go like this, disconnect it. Then we look at the power grid. That should be 5,200. So we add. 500 the static power that's 5700 and then we add 10 percent which is uh, 570 on top so that's uh that's a pretty uh, sizable boost that means this building alone just at the cost of using 10 summer sloops you get one uh, in in my case right 1070 megawatt of power this is amazing and as the network gets bigger then you will get even more this is absolutely amazing. Now, at this point, we don't really, really need it. We are at using 3.5 gigawatt and we have 5.6, uh, 5 5.2. Uh, so we don't really need this, but it's really nice to have. And the bigger the power network, the bigger the 10% bonus, bonus will be. So that's one thing that we can do with it. And that's amazing. But I think the other one is equally amazing. So there's a great trade-off between the two options we have. So that was the free power. This one is, you saw there was an input as well. Alien power matrix, that means we can feed it something very late game, and that means it'll be even better. I think it goes up to 30%, but it's also going to cost like some of the most expensive items in the game. So, yeah, let's hold back on that. Um, here, start research, production amplification. So let's do that. That is basically, if you're familiar with Factorio, and of course you are, then that is a productivity module. Let's see. Production amplifier unlocked. Every single manufacturing and smelting building will be backwards compatible with this new technology. These buildings can now have a summer sloop embedded to increase resource output without requiring more input, at the cost of greatly increased power consumption. Flow cycles within flow cycles make explosions into temples and explosions into temples. Sure. The spin sphere of woven windows. Each tiny body contains tinier bodies until the line layers fold into curves, which folds into threads, which weave the tapestry. 
the smell of my head leaf and flower, the dance of matter clouds and... I think they're trying to explain energy to matter conversion theory, <laughs> but you do not need to understand oh, okay. it to do your job. Oh, good. I'll just mute them for you so you can continue your mission. I, Thank you. however, will be taking notes. This is fascinating material. There. So what are we building in the meantime? We have built a little uh, box crafter here. And uh, now what that means is we can actually go in here and we can do something like some of this stuff here, like for example, power shots. So this is one power, one blue power slug into one power shot. Let's get some sluggies, slugs, and we're gonna get all them sluggies. There we go. And that's nice. And if we scale up with, with this here, we see four megawatt of power. Zzzz. That goes, ah, uh, yeah, it still doesn't do that on the first run. And then if we see, okay, so one to one, and then if we insert a summer sloop, it now goes one to two. So we get free resources. Power-wise, it's a lot. So let's uh, see how much it goes. Here's the thing. The very first one does not get the bonus. So you might want to just um, do something useless for the first round so that it's, uh, it's, it's ready to set up. That's just a, a little thing here, but that's just a two multiply. It in a constructor, it takes one. If we look at a here, um, let's see what I can do here. But then it it would take two to get there, and you guessed it. Of course you did. If we do it here, it's of course four. And power wise, this one, fifty seven. Uh, that's a little bit hard to decipher. 10 times as much power. So this is, oh, no, 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 it goes down. There you go. So six, 16 megawatt of power, that means it's four times as much power by doing this. And then the power scales sort of non-linearly this way. But that means if I fully stack it up like this, I am use I have a constructor that uses 57.5 megawatt of power, but we're also just converting into blue power slugs incredibly quick. So this is why, oh, look at that. There's actually a nice fancy purple graphics coming out of it. and. It, there, that's nice. Um, this is also why I have deliberately not done all of these. I converted them because I think that's a much better way because now I can get two to one. So I get this one will uh, become 220 power slugs and this one will become, I don't know, 81 times two to 160. So we'll have plenty of power slugs uh, coming in here. Is it coming in? There we go. It goes through and it goes up here. Yes, up uploaded. That's pretty amazing. And this is why if you look at the top left uh, right hand corner, if we could do that for those big builds that are expensive, then hey, we suddenly don't need 2500 wireless frames, but we actually need 1250. And it's a finite thing, so it'll just be there. So that is pretty damn amazing. I'm going to keep this one going. And then what I'm also going to do is we have 13 of these left. So we're going to take some of the, the products over here that are most is struggling <laughs> and uh, and just put them in there so for example if we look at this one so it's also important that it doubles the output but it doesn't change the input this one is constructing and just making 2.8 something and then if i do that it goes from 55 into 220 no extra cost needed here no extra resources just extra power and using or allocating some summer sloops and then we double this one. That's really nice. We can do the same thing here. Remember, doing this is now costing us, yeah, 220 megawatts for each of these. So it's going to be really quick to, for us to use all of our power as soon as uh, this one sort of gets into the next construction here. Uh, they take a while to get in there, but we can then see that this one goes to 220. What about the other one? Uh, the other one is a little bit further away here, and we should see it now coming in and there 220 and it actually produced two uh, already the first time nice so okay and this one as well is now also producing more so power is struggling even more Whew. well that's that's something all right so now let's do some design work together we need to make the things in the top right hand corner and we're going to be making some blueprints for it because I want to provide those blueprints because this is something that you're going to need once every game so no reason to to uh, redesign it all the time just use this blueprint and the idea is that what I call box crafting and we're going to start with the I don't know uh, let's actually start with there 
with the wireless frame. So I have decided that I want to complete this in 200 minutes. That means I need this needs to be running at production speed of one every two minutes. This needs to be running at production speed of uh, two and a half per minute. And this needs to be running at production speed 12 and a half per minute in order for that to work. So uh, actually, that would be what I built, what I would design for normally. But in this case, since I'm getting double output, then it's going to be done half the time, 100 minutes. Nice. So we're going to do versatile framework. There are probably alternate recipes that are better. But if we look at this, we have modular frames in a box. We have uh, steel beams in a box. So we can just do this part. Uh, let's see. If I do at this speed, that's 12 and a half. Uh, 12 and a half. Hmm. Isn't that just better to do just have one of these? Yeah, well, this is 12 and a half. And if I do that, then it goes up to 25. And that means it takes 100 minutes for this one to complete. So that's going to be one. And inputs are the same. So this is really easy to make. This is just uh, get some boxes, put it in there. Easy. All right. The next one, the, the what is it called? Modular engine. Motors, we got that. Rubber, we got that. Smart plating, we don't have that. And this one needs to be working at 2.5. If it's working at 2.5, then it now takes uh, 200 minutes if I do that. Oh no, I'm already running out. Okay, well, <clears throat> we just need to do the design work now. Here, that works at 5. Uh, so that means it's going to be done in 100 minutes. But then we need smart plating. We need to build 5 smart plating per minute. And here's the part. We are doubling the output, but not doubling the input. So we just need to make this one. And I don't want to feed that into uh, uh, also pro provide that. This one, that is smart plating. And I want to make five of this. So that, there we go. I could put it here, but I don't think I have enough for the summer sloops. Uh, let me see. That's one, two, plus four, plus four. Yeah, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> we, we don't mind using reinforced iron plates. Like this is... Uh, it's it's just 500 reinforced iron plates and f oh hold on what is it um yeah i get 200 out so i just need to produce resources for 250 so that is two of those so i need 500 so yeah the fact that i need to just use 500 reinforced plates and 500 rotors uh, is not a problem so just these two together should be done and then the last one is going to be the adaptive control that needs some automatic wiring. The circuit board, we have it. The heavy module frame, we got it. Computers, we got it. But the automated wiring is something we need to be building. And I think that's uh, in here. Automated wiring is status and cables. We don't have cables. Um, yeah. I could just put in the cables, right? I can just take the cables because I have those already created. So let's just put in the cables. And how fast is this? This is, we need to figure out if this one is one per minute. So this one completes in 100 minutes. I'm going to have to take this up because I'm going to need it for this baseline. So now that would produce two per minute. That means it's only, it's only going to take 50 seconds to build it or 50 minutes to build it. I don't want that. I want it to work at half output so that they complete at the same time. There's no reason to use more power, especially with this one in one in here. So that means I need two and a half automated wiring per minute. So let's go for two and a half automated wiring per minute. That's just this one baseline. That's good. I'm not going to be upping this one. And then we need to find the cables. So basically what I need to do now is I need to design little blocks that have input boxes and those input boxes can then be placed underneath and then just go in here. And then we need, just need to do the calculations of how much we need of each. So we're ready to design our template factory now. And um, what I've done is I have set up how much I need of each of those so that I can put those on the boxes and just get a sense of whether this is more or less than one stack or one box. Because for example, I need 7,500 uh, plates and it's 7,500 then divided by 20. That is 37.5. That is more than one full big box of, uh, of beams inbound. So we're gonna need to do two, two locations for this. Um, that means already now I know that I need to do, because I want to just, I don't want to pipe it in or belt it in. I just simply want to place it. That's interesting why it, oh, it's getting too close. That's interesting how it gets so close. Another scaling. It. I wonder if that's the, because this should be possible. I wonder if it's because of these. Let me just check. 
Wow, so this one can no longer be placed close to the edge anymore. Wow, that is a massive nerf to this. Look at that, I can't even place it here. It, I guarantee you I used to be able to. So it has to be like, like moved this much in. That makes no sense. Wow. What a gigantic nerf. All right, well... It is what it is. That's why we have a bigger blocks, but I'm not going to be making a bigger blocks. So I'm actually going to need two of these here. And I am going to need uh, 625 divided by what is it in each? It's 50. Okay. Divided by 50. So that's 12 and a half. So that's a normal, a small box. Well, this one has... Oh, no, no, it's only one box. Okay, good. And then I need a small box here. So that's the inbound. And then I'm going to get the outbound as well. And if I look at the outbound, then I am going to get 2,500. 2,500 divided by... Oh, they only stack to 50, doesn't, don't they? Yeah, they do. All right, so that would be too much for this one because it's 8 times one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 48. And that means I would miss 100, but I would just say that, well, those are gonna be stuck inside the assembler. So I'm gonna be taking one of these outbound uh, over here, which is also gonna be awful. Hmm, do I wanna place it in the middle or should I try to sort of say inputs and outputs? Uh, inputs and outputs are diagonal, would probably make more sense, right? Let's try and do something like this. And then there's only gonna be one, bo one box in here one assembler uh, so that could be I can actually do it this way and then it kind of rotates it around I think I want to do this there that should be enough room to build I mean even be doing like this yeah yeah and these are gonna go inbound they might actually be going inbound over to that side, just because that would look nicer. Uh, input belts are not going to be a problem. And this one comes in and goes... I mean, seriously, it can just be from the top one. And you... Ooh. Hmm... Let's get this one a little bit further back then. I think that's going to be enough to make it work. It works. And then you can then go one back again. I like tinkering with these kind of things. <laughs> inbound, and you're going to be inbound. This will do wireless. It'll be doing that and that and scale up. Sweet. Then it needs to go out, which should just be on exactly the line that it needs. It's expecting to go out on. Oh, I don't want the Mark IV. I just want to use Mark III for everything because they are the cheapest ones. And there we go. So that is the entirety of this design. The blueprint is now completed. I put all the bells and whistles on. It says phase three framework. I, there's no room for call versatile framework. So we call it phase framework. We call it with a sloop. And then it takes 100 minutes to complete. It's 2500 frame, versatile framework, steel beams, modular frames. Save it under my new uh, generic builds. Yes, please. Thank you. And I have also put some signs, some signs and some signs, and I'll come back and uh, afterwards when we find out that I made some mistakes, I'll also be updating the blueprints because I always make mistakes. But these blueprints are of course available to patient supporters, but if you uh, are not a patient supporter, there you see exactly what I did and you can rebuild it yourself. So, onwards to the next one. Let's start by, let's start by actually not deleting everything. I think that it's easier to just uh, clean out the stuff I want because I might just try to keep these in the locations. Yes, yes, yes. Let's do that. So now let's see if we can uh, build the next one. That means we are going to be starting with a manufacturer. I think I want to just build it. 
Let's just smash it down here in the middle. And then I'm going to have a one of these next to it. Which I think is going to be turned the other way around. That's going to be interesting to put that in. Uh, actually, I think I want these to be different. I want this to be closer to the output location. There. And you can also see that there's a problem with actually going down there. But I think we can fix that. Uh, also, this doesn't need to be a big box. Because it's only going to store 500. So don't care about the big box thing. Uh, we can build it out here as much as we want. And that looks pretty much like middle. And I think I need that middle space here. Uh, this is, this is going to go out and get replaced by a small box instead. There. So of course we can now have some challenge of getting this part into here but that's not impossible and then what this one is going to be doing this is going to be the modular frame this is going to be the most expensive one because this one will be overclocked and overclocked again that means it's actually going to be using 13 times the base power and that means we're going to be just in complete accurate numbers then it's going to be 13.431 times so it's 738 megawatt for this machine alone that's kind of a lot but hey it's worth it. And I will be building this. Let's also align you towards the middle. Good. So this one will be for the... Was it smart plating? Yes, smart plating. All right, smart plating. And let's see, smart plating is now... I need five smart plating inbound. That means I need to do this. That's also going to be expensive, but yeah, not that expensive. We're not going to be multiplying it here. And that means I'm going to get reinforced iron plates. And let's see. Is this aligned with the reinforced iron plates? Let's see if this one is. Because if it is, then it's just going to make it much easier here. Oh, that's nice. Cool. And this one is just barely not. Yes. Made it work. It finally worked. So this is awesome. And we have the signs here. It says exactly what we get in. We have the signs down here where it says what to put in each box. These two go into the modular, the smart frame build, which is nice. And it makes it at five per minute. This one goes in, consumes for five per minute of motors and smart plating and some rubber. And then makes a lot of modular frames. And uses 738 megawatt of power and it comes out here as a box of uh, modular frames that is going to be awesome and we can look in here and there are nothing but the uh, nice uh, tight corners 90 degree tight corners so that's also going to be saved as a blueprint this is now the blueprint and it is saved all right that's good then we need to clean up and make the most difficult one because this one was this one is four inputs and next one is five inputs one two three four five so it's going to be extra crowded on this side uh, which is going to be tricky for this part as well uh, we're not going to get one of these inbound but we are going to get something else inbound instead and that's uh, going to be a constructor right is it no oh did i just mess it up uh let's see yes this is the adaptive control unit and I don't want any of these because it actually just has to go to 50 because it's easily doing. Ah, yes, the automated wiring. Oops, I should have kept the other one. And luckily we can just load it, right? We can just load it. Uh, here. That's the one. Right, so this will now be changed into... Is it? No, no, no. Automated wiring. Automated wiring. And we need to figure out the speed of it. And this is going to be the adaptive control. Take all these out. Get it down to 50. And that means I need two and a half automated wiring. And that is definitely not needing this. Two and a half. Perfect. So I still need two inputs here. And I still need then three inputs on this side. That means I need an extra box that's going to be right there. Hmm. That's going to be a little bit tricky. So I could get it in somewhere else, or I could collide these, uh, collapse these so that they are closer. I think that's the right way to do it. And no, that's turned the wrong way. Oh, that's going to be preventing us from actually doing anything meaningful in terms of uh, of aligning them properly, because this is going to be mis misaligned and this is going to be misaligned. 
yeah, that's going to be pretty horrible. Um, but these two are nicely aligned, so that, there is something. I'm going to just hack away at it and see what what's the least bad thing I can make out of it. And the blueprint is now completed. Phase 3, adaptive plus summer sloop, 100 minutes, 100 adaptive control units, 100 computers, 50 heavy modular frames, um, 250 circuit boards, 250 status, and 5,000 cables. And of course, if I make mistakes in this, then we're of course going to be taking a look at it again. Also, I realized that I forgot the power poles for the previous one, but everything is set up here. You can see what you need to put in. You can see where you need to put it in. And you can see that we managed to unspaghetti it uh by or the balances so what happens here it look at that nice tight corners here running around and the other one goes over here up and over here and around and in so there we go no uh, no spaghetti in here we can leave it open we don't need to box it in so it doesn't get hidden or it doesn't get seen this is it and this is it and then what i'm going to do now is i am going to set them up here um i actually need to clear this out yeah I need to clear it up because I'm going to need clear blueprint by now. Yes. Whew. So now comes the big moment. And that is where I... I hope I... Oh, right, right, right. No, no, no. I need to fix the one that was broken. And that load blueprint. And they are now over here. That was the adaptive was broken because it missed some power bolts. So let me fix the power bolt and then we are ready to uh, insert them into the game. So now comes the moment of truth where we're going to be stamping down our blueprints and seeing that they work. We're going to go to our blueprints. We're going to be taking the ones we just designed. We're going to start with a framework. And I need to rotate it so that the input boxes are towards me. That just makes more sense to me at least. And let's see, let's shoot the, let's give them a little bit of breathing room here. So that is a good place to build it, I think. Yes, it looks nice there. Then I'm going to go in and get the next one. That's the this one here. And do I want to give it one or two? It just needs one. They're they're kind of the same build here. So they get one block. Nah, they don't get one block. They get two blocks. There we go. Not max distance. That's fine. And we're going to be taking the last one. Adaptive control thingies here. And there we go. And particularly the middle one is going to be using so much power. So what we need to do now is a little bit complicated because... If I put in the resources exactly as I need, the first one will not get a double proc because that's just how it works. Um, the first one doesn't get a double proc. So I'm going to need to change the recipe into something else. So I get first one done without a double proc. And then I'm going to change the recipe back again. And then I'm going to be unpowering it. And then we're going to bring all the resources in to look in boxes here in front. A little bit complicated, but that's just how it has to be done. So we are completely prepared. I decided to build this little blueprint. This is a power storage blueprint because as I uh, as I build this, we are going to be uh, draining resources. So I thought, you know, I probably need to build this first. So I've also created this one. I'm going to be clearing it out so I get it into my inventory because I think I need that. Uh, take all. There we go. And then we're going to go down here and stamp down this beautiful little uh, excessive blueprint here. And we're going to be stamping it down. Uh, let's see there and power storage and then you do it to be built like that that's one and then what if I go for blueprint mode I mean I know people like the blueprint mode but look at that it doesn't match so you really in order for you to use blueprint mode you have to put things hard coded on uh, on boxes there that's uh, what is that that's something and then we need wire okay yeah let's build more of these 25 in each row or and four rows in total so that's 100 of these each with 100 megawatt that gives us 10,000 megawatt of uh, output power 10,000 something something right um stored 100 megawatt hour. oh that's the specific one yes 10,000 megawatt hours that should give us a little bit of breathing room when we are... Yeah, <laughs> the charge rate is nothing. That's e Oh, the charge rate is here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So 17 for each, but 1,007. So it does say like six hours until it's full. But and it'll buy us a little bit of time when when it inevitably uh, drops out. So there's, otherwise, we'll just mean, have to be the summer sloop. Now, um, I need to do the mumbo jumbo to set this up and uh, get, sort of have it a useless operation first. And then, uh, then we'll get gather all the stuff in front here so we can hook it up at one go.
That's it. <laughs> so what I do here is I... Oh, actually, I don't want to... I just want to pick it up and then put it in here. There we go. I want to pick it up and I'm going to pick the other one up. There. And this is why I've just been... I want to do it like this because then I get this inbound and pick it up and store all. Pick it up and store. It's a little bit meticulous or sort of a, I don't know, a little bit, uh, yeah, ritualistic way. I think that's the best way to, uh, to describe it. But I just prepared all these things so that we could have a smooth transition of just putting this in. And then you might think like, oh, that's a hell of a lot of work to do this. And you don't need to be this accurate with all of it. No, I don't. But I think from a, a, a storytelling perspective, I think it's advantageous to to be a little bit more rigorous in my uh, in my movement here. So now that I am going, I should have this. Let's see. This one is building. And they should go start with the yields. Oh, I know it's something I forgot. Uh, well, it's not really a big deal. It's something we can fix. Because I wanted this to be on belts, actually. And I want this to be on belts happily going in here. There. And this one will go out on a middle belt. That's too long. And then, because I want this to be working 100% automated. Well, box crafting automated, of course. And that's going to be there and moving forward here and yeah so now it flows in automatically we can see in the top right hand corner the first of the modular frames are or versatile frameworks are already coming in and this one is not working because uh, that's a little bit idiotic let's try that again actually align it the correct place and that should be coming something out yes a few modular engines are coming out what about this one this one only needs to to produce one every every something yeah okay so it's actually going to have a longer startup time because first it needs to produce five of these and then it need those five will go in here but then the next five will be produced at exactly the same time so it, this one just has a longer startup time that is not something we're concerned about that means that it's probably also going to be ending a little bit later than than the other ones and if you look at our power network while all of us yeah okay <laughs> Okay, there's not a hell of a lot of headway here. And we that means also our charge rate isn't very much. But um, this is a temporary thing. So basically at this point, we just sit here and wait for 100 minutes. And then I guess it, it completes. Good thing this is a YouTube episode. Oh, look at that. Look at the fluffy things coming out here. Nice. All right. So let's wait 100 minutes and see what happens. We are so close. This one has idled, so that means the last one has been coming out, is coming out, is coming. Hey, there we go, 100. And the other ones, uh, they are, this one is, ooh, idling? Really? Oh, it just got in there. Wow. And then this one is, there's two on the row, so that's 96. So you are producing one. Did, okay, one got out, and then this is the final one. Look at that. Look at that. That is such a perfect setup. Whew. So I am uh, getting the last one in here. That will flow in. And then we are ready. And I will just reward the people who have uh, stuck around until the end. After me waiting for quite a while to see this one complete. Then we are going to be launching and then getting the instructions on what happens. Oh, those clouds need to go away. Well, luckily they'll be blasted away soon. So let's see. Are you done? Yes, you're done. So the last ones are on the belt right there coming in and then we're ready to launch the next phase, which means that means aluminium and that means, uh, yeah, nuclear power. Yeah, that's a lot of good stuff that's coming in. There we go. Complete. Oh, that's not it. This one. Okay. And as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, if you uh, want the blueprints, they are available. If you want to design them yourself, now you know how to design them. The idea is... Uh, the bigger part of it, not the blueprints themselves. So, there we go. Let's see what uh, Ada has to say for us as a motivational speech. Welcome to the Project Assembly Pioneer Progress Presentation. Congratulations, the Phase 3 project part shipment is finally ready for delivery. On delivery, Phase 3 will be completed and the main body will be constructed. You should know how this works by now. You'll get access to Tiers 7 and 8 in the hub. In fact, perhaps you should just go look at the technologies there yourself. 
It's all laid out so that even a monkey could understand it, so you should have no issues. Thank you. Speaking of which, I don't think you need a reminder about project parts. Instead, I will be providing some interesting facts. Did you know the average pioneer succeeds at saving the day? Did you nope. know the average pioneer knows how to optimize pipe throughput? Well, that's obviously Did you also know lie. the average pioneer stays late at work because they care about humanity? Anyway, that might be I true. thought you might want to know more about your peers. Good luck in phase four. Thank you. All right, let's launch this damn thing. Let's see what we got. And we'll switch to that one. And we'll just let that be the outro for this uh, this episode. Oops. I want to have everything else. Ah! I'll stand over here. There we go. Looking up. Beautiful. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you do, be sure to hit the like button as we see this uh, construction of the next phase. And we go into the next phase of the game. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care. And as always, stay effective.